And this video is sponsored by Yehu. Yehu is an online professional learning platform that helps anyone perfect their skills in digital art and digital 3D content creation. So if you're looking for a platform where you can learn from artists that are actually working in the industry, or maybe you're looking for a platform that can teach you how to get things done either as a beginner, an intermediate, or as a professional, then Yehu is the right place for you. Right now, there's a huge set of courses that you can learn from. And of course, if you're into Maya or you're trying to get started with Maya, there is actually a Mastering 3D Modeling in Maya course that is available right now. Link is gonna be in the description as this course covers a huge set of content that you will definitely want to take a look at. And of course, if you're looking for an amazing place where you can find excellent and high quality paid tutorials, go Yehu. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is going to be a very quick and a very simple Maya Q&A and it has to do with MASH. So the question is, does Maya have any procedural dynamics for motion graphics for MASH? And yes, it does, but I don't really know if we should classify that into procedural. But then I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can get these things going. So if we jump over to our poly modeling tab, we can create a very cool cylinder. Now, if you also go over to the mash section, you can create the mash waiter. Now, once you create a mash waiter, it actually does two things. First of all, it creates something known as repo meshes, and then it distributes that repo mesh into 10. So you can notice right here, it has it all to 10. If we go over to distribute, you would notice it's set to 10. So you can play with this however you want. This is totally up to you. And of course, you can also choose however or whatever type of distribution that you want. So at this point, let's say we want to make this as a grid and set this three by three. We cannot select this to move it. All right. So even when we make a selection, we cannot move it. The reason why we cannot move it is because the repo mesh cannot be moved owing to the fact that this by default is a mesh object. And for that reason, you need to go over to mesh and then you need to add a transform. Now with the transform, if you come over to the section called controllers, you can right click and create a brand new controller, which will create a null object that you can now use to transform this repo mesh. So all we've done so far is just to tweak the repo mesh so that we can prepare it for our simulation. So for your motion graphic simulation, if you would like to get dynamics, in Marsh, there is actually a dynamic node. So the dynamics node is here right now. So you can simply click, click on add dynamics node and it's going to add a brand new dynamics node with a bullet solver. Now at this point, once you go through and press your playback button, you would notice that the animation starts happening. And once it gets to the floor, you have that, you know, you have that dynamic thing going on there. So having the dynamic thing going on there is a very cool option. But then what if you would like to have, you know, maybe a base, you don't want to travel all the way down there. You just want to have that base. So what we're going to do is simply hold down shift, right click and get a plane. So with this plane right here, switch over to your skill and scale this all the way up. And since the bullet solver is responsible for dynamics right here in Marsh, what we need to do is select the bullet solver. And right now you'll notice we have an input section that requires collider object. So to actually make this a collider object, to actually make, you know, the plane a collider object, we need to use the middle mouse, not clicking, middle mouse, click and drag with the middle mouse and drop it right over here, right there. Cool. So once you do that, and bounce this all the way back, press the playback button, you'll now notice that you have this going on. And yes, for those who might be asking, can you tweak your repo mesh after you're done with it or something like that? Yep, you can. Actually, this is a very interesting mode of working with mesh because you can still use mesh and you know create some sort of instances that would just happen, all right? So let's say for example, we made that cylinder. The cylinder, the meaning to create mash or you, you know, you assign a mash waiter to it, it automatically makes that cylinder invisible. Okay. So now, right now, if we press H on the keyboard, we can unhide it and we can actually move it over to a point like so. Let's move it over to this point. And since we haven't started doing any form of poly modeling to this, once we press T on the keyboard, we can lose the caps, for example. So set the caps to zero, switch over to face, select that face. Let's just frame into this. And of course, we can choose to insert, you know, and also make some some you know some modeling decisions so at this point if you're thinking about modeling you want to make some 
few changes yep you can so you can do all of these beautiful things by simply using just the repo mesh and this would you know create these instances across and of course if you're trying to get into maya and you're looking for ways or maybe looking for a tutorial that you can use to get started with modeling the guys at you does have a mastering 3d modeling course that you can avail yourself of getting right now this course is over 32 hours of video footage and you're going to have a full lifetime access the minute you seem to register for the course and of course it does come with a couple of things that you can get and at this point you are having a 25 percent off so just in case you want to get this course you want to learn how to make some of this amazing looking stuff you want to learn how to get started with modeling you want to do some crazy complex modeling you want to get started with understanding how to define your topology how to refine them and also how to do some crazy looking mechanical you know character then of course this course is something that you should actually take a look at at the end of the course you will definitely learn how to do some rendering using Arnold so this is definitely going to be about it I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section if you want to know more about MASH or you have more questions about MASH that you would like us to tackle later on please put that in the comment section and we will do just fine to attend to those so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace